Hey everybody, it is December 3rd, 2008. I'm Sonic Sons, with a little more philosophy here. Someone named Rfish2 sent me a message about ontology and mentioned uh, epistemology. Or epistemology. Or epistemology. Blah, 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 blah. So I told him that uh, maybe I'd do a video about that, and in fact I am. But instead of doing the entire field of epistemology, which is defined as, uh, well, it's the philosophy based on what is knowledge and blah 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 sort of thing. <laughs> a lot of philosophy has vague, vague definitions like that. Um, I'm doing a particular thing within that called the Gettier problem, which on the outset sounds like the problem of, like, greed. <laughs> if you want to get things and you're all Gettier, then... <laughs> so, the Gettier problem is, um, a little thing that says, okay, it, it, obviously within epistemology it's talking about, you know, what is knowledge. Now, traditionally, knowledge is defined as justified true belief. What does that mean? All right, um, working backwards, shall we do? Belief, you, you know, like consciously have a belief of something I believe, the world is round, or relatively round. Don't get me started on the details. <laughs> we're, for the purposes of this video, we're just gonna say the earth is round. Yes, there are mountains and valleys and so forth, but anyway. Um, I believe the world is round. And this is true. We walk around, we look at things, etc., etc. the world is actually round. Uh, but it doesn't count to believe that accidentally, like, you know, you happen to like circles, so you just, you know, our world is round, and, and Pluto is a square, and, you know, no, no, no. It has to be justified, right? You have to you know, have actual evidence, uh, people have looked at the Earth, they've surveyed it, we've gone to space and looked down at it, okay, we're pretty sure it's around now. Now, there are a couple of things to consider here. Um, the one thing to note is that it's possible to arrive at a true conclusion based on bad logic or beliefs or whatever, right? Um, and that would be a true belief which is non-justified. The, the whole thing is justified true belief. It's abbreviated JTB most of the time. Right, so uh, this is a little thing I call the bowling ball argument, which going along with our Earth is round type of thingy, uh, tells us that, okay, uh, the bowling ball is heavy and the Earth is heavy. Uh, therefore, the bowling ball is round, and we can conclude that the Earth is round. That's a terrible line of logic, obviously. The shape of the planet has nothing to do with the shape of our minor sports equipment or whatever, right? Uh, but it, by complete coincidence, happens to arrive at the proper conclusion. Yes, the Earth is round, relatively. <laughs> um, and, 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 you know, okay, good job of you getting a true belief. Now, you got that entirely the wrong way. That sort of logic is not going to do you uh, very well most of the time, etc., etc., Soon enough, we'll be saying the Earth is shaped like a tennis racket, <laughs> uh, or whatever. But it's possible to have a true belief uh, that's not really justified. Now, another point to consider is that uh, everything in this little thing, justified true belief, is spectrumalistic. The word I like to use, which is everything is like you know, not binary. It's one or the other. No, it's a spectrum. Like justified, well, how justified? Yeah, exactly. How much data do you need? How much investigation do you want to do? They felt like you know. 10,000 experts tell me the Earth is round. Well, what about 10,001, you know? Or could, could, could I get 20,000? Could I get, you know... Can we check the data just just one more time? It's spectrumalistic. You get to a point where it's justified enough for whatever your purpose is. Uh, nothing of being true. I've already mentioned the Earth being round. Well, okay, you know, exactly round, you know? Even something like a billiard ball, which you think is exact. No, of course, on a molecular level, not exact. So no statement... You know, at least no statement that you could easily think of is, is exactly true. Everything is at least slightly off what you think. So even something obvious like, you know, I don't know, time. You think time would have been pretty universal, right? Time, everyone experiences time in the same way. Until Einstein comes along and proves you wrong. So everything's at least slightly off. And then belief itself is spectrumless. How much do you believe in a thing? Believe in it 100%? Really? You know, is it? Is there anything that might make you doubt? Is there, you know, in the back of your head, is there just a, a little bit of hesitation? Anyway, spectrumality, right? And also bowling ball arguments. Okay. So here comes the Gettier problem. There's, um, there's several different ways to state it, but here's one. Um, farmer wants to know uh, about his cow out in the field, and he wants to make sure the cow is still in the field, hasn't wandered off. So... Uh, he goes off and he looks and he sees this black and white object thingy near this tree. And he goes, oh, look, my cow is there. Good. He has a justified, true belief. Later, his uh, employee goes out into the field and discovers that the cow is in the field, um, but in a different part of the field. In fact, 
that object that the farmer was looking at was actually some black and white paper that got caught in the tree or something like that. You know, apparently a very large sheet of black and white paper, whatever. <laughs> now, this poses an interesting question because the farmer had a justified belief the cow was in the field. And it's true, the cow was in the field, and yes, he believed it. But did he have knowledge? Remember, the justified true belief is a definition of knowledge. And it would seem to us that he didn't really know the cow was in the field from seeing the paper on the tree, and therefore, says Gettier, um, you know, the, the definition of knowledge is apparently flawed. You know, we need something different than justified true belief. No, actually. <laughs> um, justified true belief, you know, stands up pretty well, actually, uh, to, 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 to the problem you're posing here. Uh, what you've done is taken a bowling ball argument and you've put a little layer of obfuscation on it, right? Bowling ball argument, the bowling ball, and then, you know, we, uh, the earth must be shaped like a bowling ball because they're both heavy and random, ridiculous logic, um, you know, concluding, okay, you know, and, and thus the earth is round. Well, we get the right answer, but for the wrong reasons, right? Now, throw in, uh, with the bowling ball, per se, that's obvious enough. What we do with this cow is we throw in uh, apparent justification, right? It looks like, oh, there's a cow out there, a black and white object thingy, there it is. Um, and so you say, oh, but that was justified true belief, but it's not knowledge, but it, no, 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 it's not really justified. Like I said a moment ago, it's all spectrumalistic. Nothing's perfectly justified. It was fairly well justified, you know, with, with that sort of visual information. There's a, there's a very good chance that there's a cow in that field, but this is one of those you know, rare occurrences where you look at something and you see black and white out in the field and it's actually not a cow. You know, the only thing is a bowling ball argument is very obviously non-justified. This is just, you know, a little non-justified sort of a thing. Uh, he puts up a couple of examples. There's Mr. Smith and Mr. Jones are both applying for a job, right? Um, Smith believes that Jones will get the job, maybe because, I don't know, he heard uh, the boss, you know, the prospective boss say something good about Jones. I don't know. Is it justified belief Jones will get the job? He also knows justified belief uh, that uh, Jones has ten coins in his pocket, right? Jones does have ten coins in his pocket. Now, Smith concludes, the man who will get the job has ten coins in his pocket. The man, in this case, meaning Jones. But Smith is wrong about who's getting the job. In fact, it's Smith himself is getting the job, and Jones is getting the boot. Now, Smith's original statement, the man who has 10 coins in his pocket will get the job, or the man who's going to get the job will have 10 coins in his pocket. It's the same way with Wiz. That turns out to be true because Smith himself has 10 coins in his pocket. He didn't know that. He, he didn't bother to count his coins this morning or something. I don't know. Now, according to Gettier, oh, this throws another whole monkey wrench into justified true belief. But you're just doing the same thing with another bowling ball argument. <laughs> right? Um, Smith has a justified belief that Jones will get the job, but it's not justified enough, it turns out. It's fairly well justified, but, you know, to, this is one of those instances where, no, never mind, it looked like Jones is going to get the job, but in fact, Smith gets the job, right? Um, so he has a wrongful belief, uh, but due to this little bit of obfuscation we throw in with the coins, I don't, don't want to say obfuscation like Gettier is intentionally trying to lead you astray, I'm just saying that uh, due to this thing with the coins, that statement, the man with ten coins in his pocket will get the job, turns out to be true, but it turns out to be true based on a false idea which is, you know, the bowling ball argument. That's fine. That's understandable. Just how true belief still stands. And then some people say, no, no, but, okay, you know, this false premise is involved. It, uh, you know, um, what if there was no premise? What if you saw Bob sitting in a room, but it's not Bob, it's a hologram, and there's no premise involved there at all? Like, what the freak are you talking about? Of course there's a premise. Is the premise of that visual information corresponds to Bob in the room. And 99.999% of the time, that would be true. But in this case... No, because it's a hologram. This is one of those very rare instances where you turn out to be wrong. So again, spectrumality. Bowling argument, justified true belief, still works just fine as a measure of knowledge. Get here, I don't know what you're talking about. Thanks for watching. See you later.